Hello you chefs, welcome to my weekly cook along video. So you should have your box net by now, this swanky new UV Chef box, it's tough as ours is, uh, quadruple cardboard on the bottom and the top to make sure it all arrives with you, absolutely perfect condition. Uh, inside you'll find lots of different containers, things like this, these are our bio cane containers, we've got little uh, plastic uh, vacuum pack bags but they're also uh, compostable as well, so have a look at our website where you'll see all the information about the packaging, but nearly all of it now is compostable and by the end of the year it will all be uh, completely uh, compostable. So get your recipe book out, they'll have the recipe cards in there according to the recipes that you've ordered, Get all the dishes, group them together so you know what's going on. Really, really simple to put together. And now I'm going to take you through the 10 dishes on this week's menu. You don't have to watch the whole thing, skip to each dish. Or if you want to laugh, seeing me and Ed uh, cooking up uh, all these dishes, watch the whole thing. But for now, let's get cooking. First course on the UV Chef menu is our weekly bake. So inside here you've got our house of capture. It's got some confit garlic and rosemary in there. It's in this paper, this is uh, greaseproof paper but it's compostable, so that's going to go in the oven. The sticker, you can leave that out on there as well, it's all oven tested, all absolutely fine. That's going in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes, so get my comment to put it in, there you go. And then we sent you with a lovely little rosemary butter, whipped rosemary butter, nice and light. What you want to do, get a little dish, and then well ahead of time, you just want to take this out of the fridge, and then you can just cut it, either with scissors or a little knife, undo it and the idea here is we want this out on our board in a good bit of time to soften okay so that can go in the bin because that's compostable and then I'm going to put a little bit of salt just on the top of there like so that's going to soften for about eight or so minutes whilst the capture is baking we've got a little dish to put it on we'll be right back and serve it up so just taking my capture out of the oven now Let's unwrap it, there you go. Lovely slab of focaccia, look at that. Oh, smells absolutely delicious. Remember as well, the paper, you can keep it if you want to kind of line your trays up. So all I'm gonna do is just, just cut those edges off and then I'm just gonna cut this into four lovely chunks. Make sure you get that rosemary, make sure all that's on there. And then I suggest olive oil or rapeseed Nice bit on the top, and up to you, but I like a little bit more salt on there. It's a lovely bit of salt. And then let's get that into our dish. Like so, there you go. That's our first course on this week's menu, our weekly bake, rosemary for capture, and that delicious rosemary butter to spread onto it. So first to start a few, we have a smoked salmon Kiev just here. So what you've got, you've got smoked salmon mousse inside, some fresh salmon in there as well. Inside we've got a Cafe de Paris butter, so a little bit of spice going on in there. And then we've got the little panko breadcrumbs, which are gluten-free around the outside. That's going in the oven about eight to 10 minutes or until it's hot in the center. So a little skewer just in the center, testing that butter's nice and hot. Uh, Edward, in the oven please. So eight to 10, that's going in. Right, garnishes. Now you can do this closer to when it comes out of the oven, but it's not gonna hurt, get it all done now. So what we'll do, we've got a little lemon dressing just in here. So give that a nice shake. Let's just cut the edge off of that. And then let's pour a little bit into our cucumber. I'm just gonna save the rest for the end. I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning as well. When I season, just take the mold and salt, or just kind of like press it between your um, fingers, just to kind of grind it up slightly. Let's take a spoon, and let's make sure that's nicely mixed. Just handle it nice and carefully so that you want to keep those ribbons as whole as possible. Okay, so we've got some dill on there. Right, now we want the uh, Kiev to sit in the middle, so we're just going to take some ribbons. And be nice and free here, you don't want it to all look too arranged, so just kind of Take some of that cucumber and the nice little bit of dill that we've sent you with it. Just arrange some of that just around the outside, leaving a nice little gap. So that's all in there. A little bit more cucumber, like so. Then let's get some of that dill. Put that all around. 
like so. So, that's all the way around. Then I'm going to take a nice bit of my cucumber relish. So in here we've got mustard seeds, got lots going on in here. Nice and vinegary. That's going to cut through the, uh, the salmon. So, I'm just going to use two spoons to do a nice little quenelle of that. Sit that just in there, like so. You can, of course, serve more on the side. Then that's all ready uh, for when our little kia comes out. I'm going to keep some of the dressing just to go around. We'll be back in about five, six minutes to finish this one off. So, all ready to plate our little um, kia now. So, I remember I've got my little bit of lemon dressing just left over. And then my little Kiev is just coming over, eventually. It smells amazing. <laughs> right, here we go. So, lift it up on that paper. And a little bit of salt, just on the top, like so. See that, no leakage, all of that butter is inside. And let's sit that in the centre. And then, just finish it touch more lemon dressing of course because this is nice and citrusy so it will go great with all of that Cafe de Paris butter. There we go. So there you go. Smoked salmon Kiev, pickled cucumber, little salad and that lovely little cu cucumber chutney on the side. So a little classic for you now. This is a French onion soup but slightly sort of changed up a little bit. We've got French onion soup just there, and then my garnish, we've got a little oxtail, so a little uh, braised oxtail picked down. We've got it on some sourdough to toast, and then we've got a lovely white onion rabbit just on the top of it. And we've got some little confit shallots, which we've just coloured off. That's going to go in the oven about six to eight minutes, and that goes. And then get your little disposable bag of your soup. And you can see this is um, a veal stock basin here, That's hence why it sets up really, really nice. We want that lovely meaty flavour. So I'm just going to empty that out into there. And then that's going to go onto the heat. So we're just going to bring that up. You don't want to boil it, you just want to bring it up to a simmer and then leave that well alone. And then I garnish when it comes out, I've got this lovely bit of parsley oil, which we're just going to snip off the top and pour that round in the soup once we plate it up. So back in about six, uh, where we'll get this lovely oxtail French onion number plated up. Right, let's get our French onion soup all plated up. So these have been in about eight minutes now. See our red bit? Well, that's lovely and soft on the top. Remember, we glazed it for you. So it just needs a little heat, and then you get a lovely soft red bit mixture on the top. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna plate it so you see everything. So I'm gonna get a few of those nice onions in. And then we'll get our red bit, like so. It's all looking nice to me. And let's get our French onion soup. Oh, got your soup As in. if by magic, here it Season is. Seasoned to perfection. <laughs> so look at that. Lovely, rich, dark soup. It's veal stock taste. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, lovely. Really, really more. So what I suggest you do, just try and spoon it in and really important so you can see everything. So it's a little take on the French onion soup with the, the onions in there, instead of like lots of the stringy onions, which can be a bit annoying when you eat them. Um, we've just done, so you've got those really nice coffee shallots in there. And there you go, just get a little bit more in there. Cow rich, all that color from roasting the onions. And then let's get our oil off the edge and then simply pour it around and that will just split out and you get those lovely little little pools of oil just floating to the surface and there you go little take on french onion for one of our starts on the menu this week Vegetarian starts here for you. Uh, this is a new one that we're doing this week. This is a pressing of beetroots, uh, and then we've basically salt baked the beetroots, and then we've cooked them also with some Cabernet Sauvignon vinegar in there. So you can see all those lovely beetroots all pressed in there. We've got some puffed grains for some lovely little texture. So in there we've got wild rice, we've got a little bit of pearl barley, we've also got some savoy cabbage, a minute in the oven. So that's gonna go in now, just to warm that up. So what you wanna do, 
with your tureen. First of all, get a fish slice right from the end, underneath, and just lift that off of your UV Chef paper, like so. Then, just around the outside, we've got some eco film, so this is eco clean film. Just lift that off, like so. And then, rapeseed oil, olive oil, whichever your preference. See how you get that awesome shine straight away. And then, a tiny bit of mold and salt, just on the top. There we go, right. Let's then put that onto our plate, like so. Next garnishes. So I'll get a little pan of scalding water just here, nice and carefully, and a spoon. In here I've got my horseradish creme fraiche. So get your spoon, see the shape, see the shape of that, perfect for doing a little quenelle. Just put that into the water. Thank you very much. And then into the little horseradish, like so. And then just making that nice and loose on the bottom. There we go. So, then we're all ready to finish off. So there's our grains. In the piping bag, you've got a little bit of beetroot ketchup. So cut off your end of the bag. Again, this is a little uh, compostable film around this. So then just pipe it. You see how I've got that nice little colour difference, which is really nice. Nice bit of ketchup all the way around. And then what we want to do next, just to complete it, get some of those grains and just get some nice little spoons, like so. A few on top of that cream. A few on the side as well. There you go. And then finally, a tiny bit of rapeseed. Around like so. There you have it. Lovely starter. Little pressing of beetroot. Cabernet Sauvignon video. Horseradish, ketchup, grains. Awesome. So this dish was so popular a few weeks ago, but it's backed by popular demand. So we've got a roasted fillet of cod. Look at that, the chunkiest cod, really, really nice. We lightly salt it just to bring some of that liquid out of it, and then we just give it a quick rinse. Uh, we color it on the top. All that has to be done about eight to 10 minutes in the oven, um, and that'll be ready to go. Rest it for a couple of minutes before you serve it as well, top tip for fish. So if you put that eight to 10 minutes in the oven, please. Then we've got gem lettuce, which we just roasted about six minutes, that's just gonna take in the oven to warm up, no longer. We've got some crispy cod skin. So the reason we send this is so that the skin, um, if you have it on the fish, it's gonna be uh, not, not nice and crispy. So like this, you have this perfectly, lovely, crispy cod skin, one to two minutes in the oven, that's all that needs. Sauce pill pill, Spanish inspired sauce. This is where we use some of the cod. Uh, we cook it with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, chili, lemon, we split it out, we add it back together and uh, magically it makes this lovely mayonnaise. So that's in there. Shrimp and lemon dressing uh, to go with. That's all this dish is. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes. I'm going to get my lettuce in, in four, then my skin, and then we'll be back up. Nice warm plate to plate this up on. Back soon. So my cod has been out of the oven now about two or three minutes just uh, resting. Really, really important. And then we've got our cod skin. Uh, just coming out of the oven now, and our gem lettuce. There we go, so cod skin, that just makes it extra crispy, that's all ready. And then we've got our gem lettuce. So, sauce pill pill, give it a little stir. So, it looks obviously like it's full of cream and yogurt, but there's no dairy in this whatsoever. So, take a nice big spoon. With that, that's got this lovely little flavour of garlic, it's got lemon in there, it's got chilli. Oh, and then, just with the palette knife, see how you just push that out. Okay, nice little chefy swipe. Then what we want to do, get our gem. So our gem lettuce, a little bit of seasoning on that just before it goes on. And then let's put that just at the back. Cod, 
So a bit of a bigger fish slice this time. And we'll just put that in there. A little clean down. Tidy chef is a good chef. And then let's take some of our shrimp and lemon dressing. Again, give it a stir. And then get some on top of that cod, some on top of the lettuce. And all that lemon will start mixing with the actual lettuce itself. Some around. And then of course let's get some of the actual dressing, which way your plate is just warm. That will just, just warm that and up, up enough. Cod skin, really nice way of serving it. Let's put some pieces just around. It adds that lovely little bit of much needed crunch in the dish. There we go. Roasted fillet of cod, sauce peel peel, lettuce, shrimps, crispy cod skin. One of my favorite main courses now, this is a saddle of venison. So what we've done, we've got the venison just there on the bottom and then we've made a chicken mousse, which is just on the top. It's wrapped in serrano ham. And then we tie it, we sear it all off. It's just, it's just absolutely stunning, this venison. What we do, we do send you a little bit of paper just in the box. So take it out of that packet, put your paper on a tray, venison on, 10 to 12 minutes in the oven. If you want it well done, do it in an extra six or eight minutes. I say, Medium pink is the best way to serve it, but yeah, well done, about six to eight minutes extra. So that's going in the oven now. And then what we're serving it with, spetsley. So spetsley, this is just like a, it's almost like a batter, uh, which we just make and then we pass through a very kind of wide uh, sieve uh, into boiling water and then we just let it simmer and then we saute it. This has been sauteed with a little chestnuts in there. And then we've got another great accompaniment to venison, cabbage. This has got uh, carrots in there, sweet, celeriac, really nice compote. What you want to do, take the lid off the spetsley container, like so. Keep the lid loosely on the cabbage container, so then that's just going to almost steam. Both of those, see these really cool containers, they go in the oven, everything really, really good. Both of those are going in the oven as well, 10 to 12 minutes. So, this is where we try and have everything very similar cooking times to make it easier for you. Elderberries, they're going to go onto the dish at the end. These are foraged by our own fair hands and sauce grand veneur. So this is a venison sauce finished with a little bit of red currant jelly, green peppercorn, touch of chocolate. That is just gonna get warmed up at the end. Don't boil it because it will split. The, the chocolate will go grainy on it. So just up to the simmer, uh, just before we need to come and serve it. Back in about 10 minutes or so, we're gonna rest the venison a little bit, two minutes or so, and then we're gonna plate up this dish. Okay, my venison has been out resting. That's my sauce grand veneur. Nice warm plate ready to go here. So venison, as I said, rest in for two to three minutes before you, um, before you cut through it. And of course, cook it for a bit longer if you do want it um, medium well done. Take your uh, scissors and there's snip through that string like so. And then you can just, thank you Eddie, you can just pull that string off like that. Let's get that in the bin so it doesn't go on the plate. Pull our venison off ready to slice on the board. Right, garnishes. So, Spetsley is here. There's our cabbage, all nicely steamed in our container. So what we're gonna do, just give that a little stir. And then let's take the cabbage. We want a nice little pile of that. Smell all that little bit of garlic we've got going through in there, all that root vegetables, really, really nice. So just put a nice little spoon of that a little bit longer, just so that you can get both slices of venison that we're going to put on. There we go. It's all ready to go. You can, as you can see, we give you a nice little portion. Then give your spetsley a little stir. Lovely thing about spetsley is you get those little crispy bits on there, and that little bit of cheese all melted into it. So again, a little bit of a pile of that spetsley on the side. Make sure you get some chestnuts in there. Like so, a little bit more, there you go. Okay, then our venison, up to you. You can put it on as whole, uh, but I quite like to slice this. So we're we're going to go into three nice pieces we'll do on here, like so. Then, see, you can plate it just like that, so where you can see the moose and the chicken. Look at that. 
So you see hardly any of the juice comes out because we've rested it. Just a tiny bit of salt. Remember you've got a serrano ham on the outside so you don't want too much. And then let's lift that onto our plate. Set that on the cabbage nicely, like so. Then we can finish off. So elderberries, quite a few on the spetsley. A few on the top of the venison. And then our sauce. So this is our grand veneur. Get some over the spetsley. And then a little bit around. Remember you can serve some on the side of the plate, so don't be tempted to put too much on the on the plate. That's when the presentation kind of goes. And there you've got a really, really nice autumnal dish, saddle of venison, little chicken and mushroom mousse, spetsley of chestnuts, cabbage, sauce from I hope you enjoy it. So on to our vegetarian course now. And as you know, UB Chef vegetarian courses are never just a boring uh, vegetarian straightforward risotto. We've done this a little bit different this week. We've done a pearl barley risotto here for you with watercress. So this is a watercress cooking li liquid, so it's gonna be nice and green when it finishes. Uh, we've got in here, let's open up the potato, root vegetables. So a nice selection of, we've got sweet in there, carrots, uh, we've got celeriac. Keep the lid on that, just loosely. That wants to go in the oven for about 10 or so minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. My evil assistant again. So that's going to go in, and then we've got crispy duck egg just here, just in some panko breadcrumbs. Six minutes for that. Again, if you want the yolk uh, slightly more well cooked, do it for about an extra two, three minutes. That will be going in the oven for six, as I said. Truffle dressing to go on the top. Um, that will be when we finish. And then your liquor, all you need to do, cut open the bag, pour all of that liquor into your rice like so. In there you've got your cheese, you've got your butter, etc. That's then just going to go onto the heat and then I'm going to bring that up to the simmer. Once it's up to the simmer, four minutes, keep stirring it occasionally so it doesn't stick and then we'll be all ready to come back and plate it up with our root veg and our crispy egg. Here we go, so the uh, curled barley is just finishing off cooking now. Let's have a look, there you go. You see how that's just thickened up but it's not stodgy, really, really important. Let's get our heated up bowl. And then just before you serve that risotto, let's have a little taste. Lovely. Real pepperiness from that watercress. So again, just be careful before you go and add salt and pepper to it. Because it's quite pokey as it is. Right, into our bowl. Like so. Thank you, Eddie. Right. And then just with a spatula, a spoon. Just tamper it out a bit so it's nice and nice and flat all the way around. Now we need to work quickly here because we don't want it all to set up. Right, let's do undo our vegetables. So there's our root veg. Let's just get a nice little scattering of those all over. What we're looking for here is different textures. So we've got a nice soft risotto with that little bit of bite from the pearl barley. And we've got some of those veg with a little bit of crunch left in them. Egg, in the center. And then finally, just for that superior kick, truffle dressing. And as soon as you put that on, you're gonna get this waft of warm truffle and watercress going all through it, so get a really good bit on there. Like so, tiniest bit of salt on our egg. How about that for a vegetarian main course? Pearl barley risotto, crispy egg, lovely little liquid yolk in the centre. I hope you enjoy. So up next we've got our dessert for you. We've got an apple tart fine just here. So we've used pink lady apples. Look at that lovely thin pastry, nice and glazed, little apricot glaze on the top. So what we're going to do, we're just going to put that on our Yubi Chef paper. That's going to go into the oven for about six minutes. And then my garnishes, I've got some little baby apples there, just poached in Calvados, little Calvados syrup. I've got a fromage blanc uh, parfait just in here, so make sure you keep that in the freezer until like five minutes before you're going to serve it. And then we've got a little brownie apple gel just on here. So this is going in the oven now, six minutes, and then we'll be back to plate up. So the uh, tart fine is just about to come out of the oven, so I'm going to get my hot one there. There it is now. I'm just going to get my fromage blanc parfait. Just take it out of your little container. And then what we're going to do, 
get some of our really nice brand new apple gel, cut the end off, so that's all ready to pipe, like so. Then let's get some of our little baby apples. Look at them, don't they look lovely? Keep the syrup for a second. Brand new apple pipe. So you see I'm piping really nice big mounds of that like so there we go all happy and then get some of your calvados syrup be rude not to a little bit of that on the top first of all next nice and simple now get your tart onto your plate like so then your parfait and at this stage now, you need to be ready to go to the table and eat it, of course, because the parfait is going to start to melt. So let's get that into the centre. Some of your Calvados, a bit more. All the way around. Look at that. Don't know about you, but I'm going straight to eat this. This is a real winner on the Ubi Chef menus now. This is a salted caramel delice. So you've got a beautiful, smooth salted caramel mousse with dark chocolate. We've got a little chocolate brownie that you can just see on the center there. And then we've got our lovely little mirror glaze on the top. And just to finish it off, a little bit of edible gold on there. So what you want to do, just take a nice little uh, fish slice, just lift it up, nice and careful. I'm just gonna very, very carefully get that onto my plate. Also, little uh, tip from the top, if you want to get an even more of a shine on the top, just put it very, very quickly under the grill, and then put it, literally seconds, and you can see the shine is awesome after that. But be very careful, because if it starts to melt, it will all flow off, and then we'll all be in all kinds of a mess. So, what we've got here to serve with it, we've got a banana and lime mousse. So just cut the end off your piping bag, and then I'm just gonna Squeeze that down to the bottom, make sure it's all ready to pipe, and then here we go. Have a nice little pipe of mousse on there. And let's get some of our popcorn. This is toffee popcorn. We just pop it and then we roll it in a lovely little caramel with nice butter in there. So we'll get a good few pieces of that on the top, and some more around. And again, it's there for a reason as well, that little crunch going really, really nicely and cutting through that rich salted caramel. And a few more pieces. And there we go. That's one of my favourites. Hope you enjoy this really nice dessert. Final course on this week's UV Chef menu is our cheese course. So just take your knife. Cut open your little vacuum pack bag and inside, remember, compostable, compostable paper, the board is as well. All right, let's undo that. You can see if that, look at that. Perfectly matured, lovely. Take your cheeses, now you've got your cheese notes, so you can do it all in order. So I'm just gonna put, first of all, a nice little goat's cheese, kids and ash on there, and then Getting that wrong. Next up, we've got the Comte. So it's a nice bit of a piece of aged Comte. Salagio. You see, just give it a little pattern, like a little dip as you go, just to make sure that you don't mix up the cheeses. Then we've got that longer in there. And then finally, nice piece of Gorgonzola. Get our quince. So we've got a nice wedge of quince to serve with it as well as chutney so that could all go in there and then the, the uh, chutney that we've got for you this is brown the apple so i'm going to get a nice little pot of that on the side the key to all of this as usual room temperature really really important so that's all plated up and then that just leaves our fennel seed crackers so these are rolled through the pasta machine let's just get those Standing up, put them in a dish or serve them on the plate, whichever you like. Like so. And there we go, cheese course with your cheese notes. 
and that completes the Uber Chef menu. Hope you really, really enjoyed it. Remember, our Christmas menus are online now. Uh, we're going to have Valentine's going on soon as well. We've got New Year's Eve, we've got all sorts happening. So have a look at the website. Last orders for next week's menu, Sunday night. Uh, but for now, have a great week and happy cooking.